Now our next two designs were sent in by Jackie A and this is Loch Fine in Scotland where obviously Jackie went on a trip last year and I've opened up this one first because I want to cover a point that Jackie has raised and as per usual I was very very naughty in not telling you all that it is perfectly okay to shred up wool, fabric, leftover bits of thread, anything at all to use when you're doing loose density colour wash designs. Because when you're doing a loose density design it is difficult to get all the little details in. But you can imply a huge range of change of colours by using your scraps of thread or if you've got plenty of wool as I have shredding some of that up. Um, I don't suggest you use mylar. You don't want glistening glistening effects. <coughs> you cut a little mask in a piece of card and you hold it over your hooped fabric roughly in the area that you want to have <coughs> extra colours in without having to use a thousand and one colour changes and you give it a quick spray nothing heavy either throw on your bits of fabric or combed out wool or your chopped up threads and then lay a topping over the top and then start stitching now in the foreground here, this is a mixture of weed and it looks a wee bit like scum, but I think it is just weed. Oops, I've accidentally caught a shape. It's not picture shower, Maggie. Right, yeah, it's weed. So, and seaweed goes through <coughs> the most glorious number of colours from really deep rich green up to very pale yellow. You've got gold kelp, brown kelp, red kelp. You've got, um, I've forgotten the names of them now. Oh dear. They make blancmanges from it. It's a very fine red seaweed. And you can find it around most of the locks, the sea coast locks in Scotland. Chopped up wool would have done beautifully in here to create this. Right, so let's go and look at the notes that got sent in. I started this challenge as suggested by doing some swatches to see the blending effect using the colours to be used in the landscape. I had chosen what proved to be a real challenge. A photograph I had taken of a wood carving in a wood near us. I had always intended trying to digitise this picture but had no idea where to start until now. I had to cheat with getting all the tiny amounts of colour by cutting up tiny bits of fabric to lay in the background, then covering with very fine tulle. This required doing outlines for where to place the scraps. Now, <laughs> Jackie, you should have looked at the leaves on the ground. They didn't fall where they were sort of pointed to and told you were going to lie there. They just got dropped. Okay, sweetheart, you do the same. You cut up your bits of oranges and your greens and your reds and your yellows and you just drop them. Onto a bit of 505 spray, cover them up. And where you don't want them to be, you cut the mask. You know, you mask out where the legs of your figure would be. I did not pay too much attention to pathing as I knew I would be changing the order of sewing after testing if I got the desired effect. Also with the loose density the run lines will show up more than in normal density. Yes they do. But you use them. 
I still need to play more with the order of stitching as not completely happy with this stitch out but I have put my back out and I'm sorry to hear about that Jackie so it will be a while before I can do any more to this design. Also did a landscape of Loch Fine in Scotland from a photograph taken on a holiday last year. I would never have thought of doing anything like this previously so you have definitely got me out of my comfort zone. If there is another way of getting the small details into the picture, I'm sure you will know how, Mags. Thank you. Right. As I said, sweetheart, you use shredded yarn, chopped up pieces of the thread. You know when you change your, your colours at your machine? And I save all mine. I've got hanks of it. You chop them all up. You mix them all up into a model you scatter them onto your fabric on your hoop which has already been sprayed with 505 and then you put your topper over the top of that and then you start embroidery okay so let's take a quick look at lock fine given that you have never done a loose density design before and you didn't know what the outcome was going to be this is not a bad attempt. I like the fact that you've put the bits of purple in the hill. I like this green haze. I'm not so keen on the cross hatching. Cross hatching is fine where you want another colour to bleed through. That colour and that colour and what's above it? That colour so where's the next colour? Oh, you see, I... I only see... Let's get in there. I believe it or not, I did look at these when they all came in. Well, that was a little while ago now. Right. I can only see a couple of layers of green. You've got your moves in here and up here. You can't have a Scottish hillside without the moves. I don't see a bleed through. You made a nice attempt on this. Your heels look great. Here you could have used, as I said, chopped up strands of wool, chopped up bits of thread, buried it under um, a topping and then just put your loose density over the top and they would have shone through your loose density giving you the detail. Okay, I'm going to leave this one and we're going to look at the next one and to do that I have to close studio no which always seems a little bit silly to me but um, open lock fine up one Hardwick Dryad open. Okay. Now, first of all we're going to look at the image. Nice wood nymph. Slightly long fingernails. <laughs> she looks like Edward Scissorhands. Thigh popping out from her clothing and a thigh popping out here and a knee right and in here you can see she's quite plainly standing against a background of weed and plants maybe stinging nettles I don't know but one of the things that you have to remember and this isn't a criticism of you Jackie it's for everybody 
Detail is only ever in the foreground. Detail is not in the background. Here you've got different shades of brown. You can't actually see the bark on the trees. You've got a very light brown tree stem here. You've got a dark brown one there. You've got another paler one in the background there, a paler one here, and then you've got one here with a bit of a green edge down here, and then you've got a very dark brown one jutting up in there. But there's no detail. Okay? Now, the detail is down here. It's in the leaves. You can see the shapes of them perfectly. Here, you can't see any shapes of the leaves. You're only aware of the different colours. Splodges of yellow, splodges of green, splodges of darker green. You do see the dark trail of the branches. But that's because the sun is above these leaves, throwing these branches into relief underneath. Here, all you see is a green haze. You're vaguely aware of the fact that it's weed. It's not until you start getting closer that you actually see there's individual leaves, but even them you can't see clearly. You know, you come down here, you've just got individual splodges of colour. Same with these. You can't really see that they're leaves. Here you've got one or two stems travelling up through a shimmer of green. Now here, you just do what the leaves do. Chuck your different colour fabrics onto your fabric after you sprayed it with a little bit of adhesive so as that holds it in place long enough for you to get the film on top. If you don't want them going behind your figure, you actually cut a piece of paper or card to match the shape that you don't want it to go behind. So if you've cut a temp if you've printed a template out, cut the figure out of the template, stick it into your hoop where it would fall, and then spray it. And then nothing will stick to that area because your paper was there masking it out. That's how you get your colour detail in. And the further back you go, the less aware you are that you've got yellows, gingers, um, orangey, pale orange. I mean, there's no green leaf there. You've got rust, you've got dark rust, you've got tans, you know, and then you've got the odd green leaf coming, but very small. You know, so use your chopped up thread, stranded fab um, wool, bits of old fabric. Just lay bits of, if you've got some strips of chiffon, just lay some chiffon strips across. Let them overlap one another to give you a variation in colour. And then do your loose density fills. Colour washing designs really is absolute freedom. You can do what you want. I'm always a little disappointed with the Ember 3Ds and this is no exception. This fill stitch, it doesn't do your digitizing any favours. I like the fact that you've used the wave fill up on the chest. This bit here you try carving that? I only just realised that. Can't see it. There it is. No, it doesn't look as though it's been carved. It's just I've got this funny zigzaggy effect. Normally if it's been carved you see it over here.
OK, now I want to go and look at your stitch outs. And this is the other thing that bugs me with Embird. I can't import your stitch outs into Studio. Now, I love the colours you used. Look at the gown. That's a rustic woven skirt. It looks really tweedy. The colours are there for tweed. The greens, the rusts, the oranges. Absolutely gorgeous. And I like the colour you used here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, look at the colour variation up here. That's lovely. Now there it is. Must have been undershading. I didn't spot the undershading. And the hair. I mean, just look at the colours in that. They're glorious. You made a really nice job of the statue and in your colour choices. You really didn't need to give a stitch effect on your tree, but it has added something to the design. The only trouble is it's made that and that stronger than your foreground. And that's what you have to watch. Things in the background shouldn't overpower what's in the foreground because they're further away from the eye. But you should be pleased with this and I hope you continue trying when your back gets better. I like what you've done here. I like what you did in your previous design. But just remember Stay loose. That's the whole thing about colour wash designs. They're loose. So you can use just about anything in them. But I don't like the embered fills. It really is a shame you get this very definite waffle effect. Okay, I'm finishing here.